Viva reached out to me and asked me to do a thickness planer review. This is a woodworking channel. I thought it would be interesting to look at some inexpensive choices, especially with the economy the way that it is. Um, bear with me, this is my first review that I've ever done. So let's go. Out of the box, you get two bags of parts. 12 pieces that make up the legs, an optional vacuumless dust hood shroud, and the thickness planer. The instructions for putting the legs together could have been better, but weren't impossible. A giant bag of bolts came with it, and it seemed a little difficult to understand until I put them in piles. We'll separate the longer bolts for now, and the rest will be used to put the base together. I found lining the leg pieces up from largest to smallest made it easier and started the build by grabbing the largest pieces and adding the second largest piece braces to them. Each joint on the legs will use a bolt, a washer, and a split washer. A couple wrenches came with a thickness planer, but if you have a socket wrench, it'll go quicker, and a square shank sock adapter will go even faster than that. After the second largest, I went to the third largest, and the last two sizes are the braces for the top. You'll want to make sure that the braces with the holes sit on the very top. Now you'll add these four rubber feet to the bottom. Before we connect the planer to the base, we'll add these rubber pads and four holes at the bottom of the planer. The bolt will pass through each one of these and secure it to the base. These last bolts, washers, and nuts will be used to attach the planer to the base. You'll notice that they gave me extras as well as an Allen wrench and a wrench. Due to its weight, you'll want a second person to add the planer. The holes on the top of the braces we talked about earlier will be where we add our longer bolts, and you'll use a washer and a lock nut to attach it to the base. There's really nothing to it. Having walked through all of that, you don't really need to attach legs to the base of the planer. It'll work just fine sitting on your workbench, although you'll still want to add the rubber feet and attach it to the table. You'll want to add the hand crank next, which is just adding the crank and tightening the screw and then the nut. And that's pretty much it as far as the build goes. There's not a lot to it and even less if you don't plan on using the legs. Before we start cutting things, I'll point out that there's a couple rollers on the top of the machine as well as on each wing. The thickness planer that I've used for about 15 years doesn't have either of these rollers, but I guess it could help the machine pull the stock in and out easier. Like I mentioned earlier, it comes with two different dust shrouds a vacuum shroud, and one that blows the sawdust out of the back. We'll start off by using the shroud without a vacuum port. Two longer bolts are included that will attach the vacuumless shroud to the back. If you're new to using thickness planers, this is a pretty common sight. Thickness planers create a lot of sawdust and debris. Now we'll check the vacuum port, which connects with four bolts. I'll note here that the vacuum port shroud is already installed, so you won't have to screw these in. Running it again with the vacuum left far less dust, Again, as expected. The one problem that I ran into is that due to the port being right in the center, I was able to detach the hose as the stock went through. To fix that, I added an elbow and I didn't have any problems after that. This is a 12 and a half inch planer, so I try to run a 10 inch board through. The first time I did trip the breaker, but I was able to get to run through. If you're planning on using much wider boards, you'll really need to take small passes. In my shop, this isn't a problem. I mean, I rarely ever do anything over six inches in width. I found that each time I did a full crank, it lowered 3 64ths of an inch, which is good as it allows you to really sneak up on the thickness you're looking for. Now we'll check the minimum thickness we can plane, and it looks like it bottoms out at about 7 30 seconds of an inch, or a little less than a quarter inch. This is slightly disappointing as my old planer can plane down to an eighth of an inch. I say slightly because if you want to get your stock thinner, you can easily attach it to a sled with carpet tape and run it through. I checked the smallest length of wood I could run through it, and keep in mind that the shorter you go, the more of a chance you'll snipe the stock. But this was able to pull a five and five eighths inch piece through, which is a little better than my old one. Now we'll take a look at the cuts. I'll rub a piece of chalk over the top, and it looks about the same as any other blade type planer. This means you'll need to use a random orbital sander to finish it, but this doesn't make or break the machine. And that's it for my quick review. If you're just starting out, or if you really are planning on just doing smaller things, I think that this is a fantastic machine. Once you get a little bit bigger, if you want to do cabinets and that kind of, you know, that kind of woodworking, I think that you're going to, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for this machine. If you're looking a little more long-term and want to spend about twice as much as this guy, 
I highly recommend the spiral cutter heads, but those are very expensive. And honestly, you might really never need to use it if you're doing just small things. This is a completely unbiased review. I'm not making any money off of this. I thought it would be interesting due to its price point. They are also offering a 10% discount. I think it's only gonna last for a week or two. So if you're really interested in this, I would jump on this sooner than later. But again, I think that this works really well if you're starting out or if you're a small hobbyist. I don't think you'll have any problems with it. Leave a comment below and let me know if this is something that you're interested in. I've had a few companies come to me and ask me to do reviews, but I've kind of shied away from it. So let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, and I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below. Come find me on Instagram at Make Things with Rob and remember to keep making things. Mm -hmm.